The typical way on a set of contract documents that the plumbing pipes are shown is through this idea of the riser diagram. And uh, the riser diagram, sometimes you'll see it as one diagram where it has both the waste system and the supply system uh, overlapping each other and as one drawing. Um, if the building starts getting complicated and has multiple levels and uh, maybe a number of different bathrooms and different kitchens and different okay. floor drains and all of that, uh, it can start getting pretty darn complicated. Uh, and so overlapping them tends to not be so useful at some point. And so in general, you'll often see them separated out unless it's a very simple, uh, simple building overall. Uh, so w once you start thinking about it, we have uh, an example here of the uh, supply uh, and the waste diagrams. Uh, and these are very diagrammatic. They're called diagrams for a reason. They are sort of true, they are related to truth, but they are not accurate drawings. They're not meant to be dimensioned. They're not meant to be uh, uh, super specific to the layout. They're meant to be a very simplistic diagram that gives an easy place for somebody to be able to say, all right, this is gonna be a four inch pipe. Right? It's a really great spot to label the sizes. It's a really great spot if you're the uh, contractor to be able to go through and count up. Let's see, okay, I've got two showers. Uh, I've got uh, uh, two lavatories. I've got two WCs. Uh, and I've got a couple of floor drains. Oh, and there's a third one down there. So I've got three floor drains. Now they can start coming up with all the pricing that they need to do. And they will look at this, but also at the plan in order to figure out the pricing on the linear feet of pipes. This is, you're not gonna really understand the linear feet of piping from these diagrams. You will understand the set of relationships that are expected uh, between the fixtures and the systems and the utilities in the basements and, the, and out in the street. So this basic idea uh, of laying it out um, in this sort of 2D fashion is really sort of the way that most people will, will show you the work. In the past, uh, I used to work for a firm, for example, that did uh, axonometric riser diagrams. And I always thought they were much more informative and I really liked them a lot. And I always did them after I stopped working there and had my own firm. I still was doing axonometric uh, riser diagrams. And I finally talked to one code official at one point and he looked at me and said, well, why are you doing that? Uh, you're just making it complicated. You're making it harder for us to actually read. And it became clear to me that, oh, that's right, the point of these is not to show accuracy. The point is to show a diagram, a concept of how these things relate to each other. So sometimes I'll still do it through an axonometric because it's a complicated element and I want to make sure everybody understands it. But vast majority of the time, this sort of simplified 2D world is actually plenty interesting and, and uh, helpful enough uh, for, the, for the plumbers and the code officials. So let's look at a couple of these examples. So we, this is the same uh, set of bathrooms uh, on a couple story building. Uh, you can see that we have the laboratory sink, the, um, the water closet and the shower and the supply side. Uh, we have the lavatory sink, the water closet and the shower on the uh, waste piping side. Uh, so then this extra piece over here is a uh, floor drain. Now, if this was a typical residential building, you probably wouldn't put, if it was like a, an apartment built, for example, you probably put, wouldn't put a floor drain in. You might, but you probably wouldn't. But uh, if this was more of a commercial element uh, or in certain situations uh, where you might have a lot of, uh, maybe it's near some place where there's a lot of swimming or something like that where people wanna wash off very, a lot or you get a lot of sand, having a floor drain would be actually pretty useful uh, even in a non-commercial setting. Uh, so different reasons, different locations, different purposes uh, will imply different types of use. But this example is just sort of showing, all right, so I have a floor drain here. Does the floor drain show up over here on the supply riser diagram? No, because there's no water going through the floor drain. I'm not putting a spigot or anything there. I'm just putting a spot on the waste line that allows for me to mop up the floor or uh, any overflow water from, a, from any accident will find its way down the floor drain, that kind of thing. So uh, 
all of these, each of these pieces has this solid line, which is that drain, that waste line going down, and they all have a trap. And the dashed line represents the vent as it goes up. So there's a vent from the uh, floor drain that then goes on the angle over. There's a vent from the lavatory that joins up with it and then goes over. There's a vent from the shower that then goes over. And those go up through the roof. So what happens on the floor below? Well, it's the same thing, but instead of going straight up from the uh, top of the uh, waste line for the uh, water closet, we have a separate vent line that runs up side by side with that other pipe and then eventually becomes one pipe and goes up through the roof. Does it have to go like this? No, there's lots of different ways it can go. This is just sort of a typical way on a smaller project that these things might start to look. Uh, if I have, say, 15 toilets all in a row, uh, you know, I might lay this out in quite a different manner. I might have one major vent pipe that goes for all of them. It connects across very uh, uh, loosely. Um, there's a whole series of different ways we could, we could orient this, but this gives you sort of the basic idea of the drainage pipes going down, the vent pipes going up, uh, and every single fixture has some way that it gets vented. Uh, even the floor drain down here at the bottom, which means that I have to have that vent pipe go all the way up to that top roof just to vent that one little uh, floor drain. When we look back over here at the supply side, we have water coming in from the street, or well, depending on whatever's going on. If it's coming from a street and there's a municipality involved, there's got to be a place for the meter, so there's our little meter box. Uh, maybe I have to also have a pump, it depends. It would depend on how much pressure there was and what the code was in that particular municipality. Uh, so these are all dependent, but they're possible to be there. And what are these little uh, things that I've got on either side? Uh, those are valves, and why do I have them on both sides of the, of the meter and both sides of, of the, uh, the pump? And so if that meter needs to be replaced, I can easily turn off the water on both sides uh, pull that meter out, put a new one in, uh, and then uh, turn the valves back on and everything can start flowing again. If you didn't have those valves in those locations, think about how hard that would be to replace any piece of equipment. Uh, same thing goes with the, uh, with the pump. And so then that water comes in, I now have an overall building system valve uh, that would allow me to uh, turn off the whole system or not. Uh, and then I have a break off that goes over to the hot water heater. So the cold water continues and becomes my main cold water pipe. Uh, after the hot water, I now have the hot water goes and joins it, and these two are gonna run parallel with each other through wherever they need to go in order to get to all the fixtures. So these then are rising up through the building. I'm showing them going in the floor, but as I said, they could be dropping down from the ceiling. They could be running in any number of different uh, spots uh, through walls or uh, any other different ways. I'm getting to all the different fixtures. I have the both hot and cold getting to the laboratory, just the cold going to uh, the water closet, and then the hot and cold with the mixing valves uh, getting to the shower. So uh, it's a fairly simple idea, but a few things start to, you start to notice. One is that, yeah, the pipes for the supply can be kind of wherever they're logical, but there's sort of basic logic behind where the drain pipe wants to go for the uh, uh, water closets. The water closets, uh, those pipes tend to be the biggest pipes. So uh, they're three and a half, four inches. If you have a number of water closets uh, attached to one pipe, it might even get much larger than that and get up to five, six. And if you have a huge number, it might even be like eight, 10, something like that. Uh, that's, a, that's a big pipe. Even the four inch pipe is a pretty big pipe to have it bend around a lot. So in general, I'm gonna try to have that pipe go straight down from wherever that uh, water closet is. And so I'm gonna connect as many water closets as I can right at that same spot. Uh, and that's gonna start driving where those vent pipes are going up through because those are also the larger vent pipes, the, the larger vent pipes associated with the larger uh, drain pipes. Uh, you can see just by looking at this, this waste uh, example, even though this is the waste for the same uh, set of uh, fixtures as this supply, uh, it looks a lot different because it's oriented differently. It's oriented around where the water closet is. 
because that's where those big pipes are. That's where everything's going to want to sort of have its main focus. And then I'll reach out to whatever else I need to get to. I'll reach out to the shower. I'll reach out to the lavatory. I'll reach out for the floor drain. Uh, whereas over on the supply pipe, I'm going to put the pipes wherever they kind of logically can go or easily be out of the way and then reach to whatever. It's not any different for me to reach over uh, to the shower as it is to reach over to the water closet. So it's just uh, you know, one, more, one more pipe in that case. So they're very different uh, in this sense, the waste pipes from the supply pipes, and you can see how they start laying themselves out differently. There's always an expander as it goes up through the roof when I'm talking about the vent. Uh, I always have the cleanouts at the bottom uh, of every stack. Uh, I have uh, cleanouts at any major change. I didn't show a, a major change uh, horizontally here, but if I did, there would have to be a cleanout. Uh, fixtures can act as cleanouts, so I don't always have to have uh, cleanouts, but anytime there's not a way to get to it, uh, there has to be, uh, I have to create one so that somebody could maintain these, these elements. Uh, and then it has to flow by gravity out to the street. Uh, so what do you do if uh, in the flowing by gravity uh, out to the street, uh, I'm trying to get out to that uh, um, out there, what, what happens if it turns out that that is actually uh, higher up? Uh, maybe I'm in the basement there and this is the street level and this is my thing, I'm flowing by gravity, I'm down below. Well, clearly what's going to happen if I do that is instead of flowing out to the uh, sewer, I'm going to have the sewer flowing into my uh, system and start coming out through the floor drains and all that. It would be a terrible situation. So, oh my god, what are we going to do there? Well, what we're going to do there is we're going to put, do something called an ejector pit, an ejector pump. And that would be a situation where uh, we have that system. Uh, we would take the main system and bring it down and still do that by gravity. And then all the elements that were down at the bottom, the floor drain, if we had any toilets or any sinks or anything down here, would then go to this ejector pump in an ejector pit. They would flow to there. And then that would be pumped upward, which would then, by gravity, flow down and join the system. Now, why did I not just take all of it in to the ejector system and pump it up and then bring it down so it's all one system. Why did I get rid of this, this part and have it go by gravity? What happens if the electricity goes off uh, or something along those lines and that maybe the pump just stops working? Um, I want to make sure that, that uh, the vast majority of all the sewage is going to find its way easily out to the street. Um, but as a convenience, we're going to maybe want to have something uh, in the basement, have some, um, some bathroom or sink or bar or something at the a little tiki bar or something. Uh, so we're going to uh, be able to do that because we're uh, giving ourselves that ejector pump and that's going to go up and it's only going to affect that lowest level, the floor drains and all those things down at that lowest level. Um, it's very similar to a sump pump. Uh, so there's the ejector. Uh, and the sump. Uh, they are very similar looking. They're both uh, pumps in a pit down at the lowest level of the building. The ejector is always with uh, actual waste, uh, and the sump is with uh, groundwater and uh, rainwater and things like that. So uh, sump pumps don't necessarily need to have a vent pipe to them because there's not actual waste in them. It's just uh, essentially groundwater. Uh, whereas uh, any time you have waste water um, from toilets and sinks and laundry and all of that that's going uh, uh, to be pumped up, that goes to an ejector pump. It would have to have a uh, vent pipe, and so that vent pipe would come over and eventually connect into the other vent pipe. So uh, like I said, you can start to see how these things can get fairly complicated, even though conceptually they're quite simple. Uh, the ideas are simple, but then playing them out, there's a lot of little details. Um, it's sort of easy to imagine that they could show you an example of one of these and then sort of point at something and say, okay, what is it? Uh, and so you should have a sort of a basic idea that there's reasons why I would want to have valves in certain locations, there's reasons why I would want to have floor drains in certain locations, there's reasons why I would want to have cleanouts in certain locations. Uh, 
that all of those things are sort of logical sort of systems, but that the actual drawing could be really complicated because the building could be very complicated. So uh, just sort of understanding the basic ideas behind all these things will uh, take you into any level of complexity uh, from there on. You could now do uh, a riser diagram of a, you know, a 50 story building with uh, 20 bathrooms on every floor. It's just way more complicated looking, but it's all the same basic idea.